Greetings fellow hero questers and welcome to my video tutorial series on how to design and print your own custom hero quest cards. This video on the series flowchart is on how to print your car graphics at home. If this is the video you wish to watch, then stick around and this video will continue in a moment. Besides the computer you use to design the car graphics, you'll need a few tools and supplies to make your cards at home. First, you'll need a color laser printer to be able to print your cards. This is the printer I have. It's the Canon Color Image Class MF741CDW. There are probably newer, better printers out there that cost less and do a better job, and don't charge a bunch for the new toners. I don't have any personal recommendations other than to have a color laser printer that you believe prints a good quality. Next, you'll need some card stock on which to print your cards. I don't have any recommendations other than white 8.5 by 11 inch card stock. You pick the thickness of your preference. While simply printing your cards on card stock may suffice some people, the cards may still be too thin and prone to smudging and bending. I recommend a laminator for laminating your cards so that they'll be preserved and much more durable and flexible and feel more like playing cards than just card stock alone would. This Scotch Thermal Laminator is the one I use, but you could probably use just about any laminator including like a $20 Amazon Basics one and it'll work just as well. Of course, most laminators don't come with many laminating pouches, thus I'd recommend you get at least one pack of laminating pouches. These Scotch brand ones are what I use. I've also seen at least one YouTube video about making print and play cards that claim that the Scotch brand is the best quality for such. Next, you'll need a tool of your choice for cutting the cards out of the laminated card stock. I'll list some tools in my experience from worst to best. First, I tried a guillotine style paper trimmer, but not this particular brand. I got one that claimed to be really sharp, but it seemed to have a problem making clean cuts through the laminated cardstock. Often it would try to bend the sheet more often than actually cutting through it. If you have a good guillotine style paper trimmer and believe it will work well for cutting laminated cardstock no problem, then more power to you. My experience with this wasn't good. Next I tried a Fiskars SureCut portable paper trimmer. This certainly worked better than the guillotine style and would probably be my best choice if I just practiced more with it. Several people on YouTube who make print and play cards often swear by it as the best overall tool for cutting their cards out of laminated card stock, and I can see why. It has a line where the blade drags up and down that you can use to line up with the print lines on the card edges. I just haven't practiced enough with it yet to get my cuts completely straight, but you may fare better. Next is an option that some print and play card makers claim is more accurate than the Fiskars, but takes a little more time and practice to get accurate. It's a cork based ruler, an X-Acto knife, and a self healing cutting mat. In case it might not be obvious how this method works, you'd simply put the laminated card stock on the self healing mat, line up the cork based ruler with the card lines, and drag the X-Acto blade down the edge of the ruler. I tested these a little bit, but without any practice, I didn't get any better results than I had with the Fiskars cutter. Again, uh, you may fare better. Actually, what I settled with was some good old-fashioned scissors. The pair of generic scissors that I had around my house was the most accurate, although most laborious. I basically took my time staring at the lines and tried to cut as close to the lines as possible and it seemed to work surprisingly well. If you really don't want to labor with scissors, I would recommend practicing with the Fiskars portable paper trimmer. Finally, you'll need a tool that allows you to cut rounded corners off the cards. Most people on YouTube who make print and play cards recommend the Katamaru Pro Corner Rounder. That's the one I bought and it works great. 
If you want to print the cards at home, you need some kind of template to be able to lay out your cards so that you may match your card fronts and backs together as closely as possible. But before you start doing that, you probably should edit your card graphics and get rid of the rounded corners that the HQCC app generates. In the end, you'll round your corners with a corner rounding tool. At the moment, I'm just moving my card graphics into a separate folder to make this easier. For each card graphic, I'm just going to eyedropper or select the bleed color, fill in the black past the rounded corners, then paint over the rounded corner borders. There, I'll just save that graphic, then quickly do the same for the other ones. Alright, now back to the discussion on card templates. You may use any number of templates and applications, but for me, I use Inkscape. You may download it for free from inkscape.org. Once you have Inkscape installed, Download a playing card template extension for it. I'll just search for Inkscape playing card extension. Ah, this first link from Inkscape looks like what I want. It's called playing cards dash Inkspace the Inkscape gallery. Click on the grid graphic to download a zip of the extension. Extract the contents of the zip to some folder. Now I just need to find out where to drop off these two extension files to add the extension to Inkscape. I'll open Inkscape and go to Edit, Preferences, System. The folder where I need to drop the two extension files would be in the path inside User Extensions. I'll open up that folder in a separate File Explorer window. Now I'll copy the extension files and paste them into that folder. Be sure to close Inkscape and then reopen it so that the extension will be available. Go to File Document Properties. Change the format to US Letter 8.5 by 11. Change the orientation to Landscape. Go to Extensions, Board Games, Playing Cards. In the Cards tab, change the bleed size to 0. In the Margins tab, change all settings to 0. In the Fold Line tab, select No Fold Line. In the Alignment tab, change Grid Spacing to, you guessed it, 0. In the Visibility tab, make sure all checkboxes are checked, including Draw Page Margin. Click Apply. If it renders with multiple lines really close to each other around the borders, there could be a glitch. If that happens, close Inkscape and repeat all these steps again to fix it. The settings on the extension's board game's playing cards will be saved, thus you wouldn't have to remember what they were again. I'm going to use this Inkscape document to map out the card fronts. First, click that magnet icon in the upper right to turn it on. It'll make our card graphics easily lock to the blue grid lines. Now, to import one of your card front graphics, go to File, Import. Find one of your card graphics and open it. Change the image rendering mode to Smooth, Optimize Quality. Check Don't Ask Again if you don't want this dialog to show up each time you import a graphic. Move the graphic so that its upper left corner locks to the upper left corner of the first card template. Drag the arrows icon on the lower right corner to resize the graphic down to fit it firmly in the upper left card template. 
copy the graphic and or import any other graphics to fill in the other seven card templates. Now what I like to do is also add cards on the four top, bottom, and sides so that I have to worry less about there being white on the edges when I cut them out later. Save this Inkscape document as an SVG file so that you don't lose it. Next, I'm going to open another instance of Inkscape and do the same configurations for card templates to use for the card backs. Import the card back graphic that you want to use for these cards. It'll be a lot easier if each paper has one type of card with the same backs for all eight cards to prevent cards getting mismatched. Resize as usual to fit it into the upper left card template. For the card backs, we're going to need them to be upside down. Click the card to change the corner icons to curved arrows. Hold the control key. Click hold on a corner icon and drag it around until it is upside down. Copy the graphic and put it into the other seven card templates. Of course, I also like to add cards to the four top, bottom, and sides so that I have to worry less about there being white on the edges when I cut them out. Save this Inkscape document as an SVG file so that you don't lose it. Now, to print out the cards, first stick a sheet of cardstock into your printer. Print out the card front's Inkscape document. When the cardstock comes out, inspect the print to see if it looks okay. If it looks okay, rotate it 180 degrees while still face down and then stick it back into the printer. Print out the card backs Inkscape document. Inspect both sides of the print to see if they look okay and the fronts and backs look like they are lined up properly. It's lamination time! Get out a laminator pouch! Slide your print into the laminator pouch between the two sides. You could try to get it centered and pressed evenly against the folded end to make it easier. Turn on that radical laminator of yours. You'll usually have to wait about one to five minutes for proper heat to set up depending on the laminator you're using. Laminators usually have some light or indicator that is hot enough to laminate. The green ready icon indicates that my laminator is ready to laminate. You could try higher heat if you get better results and are willing to experiment. When you're ready, just stick your laminator pouch covered print folded end first into the feeding end. It should automatically start slowly feeding in. You don't have to push it. When it finishes coming out, it should be fully laminated. Still, I like to flip it over and laminate it a second time just to get the laminate on better. Let's see how this turned out. Looking good. Are you getting excited about this? I sure am. Now to toil away at it with the good old scissors. Be sure when you cut out the cards, the card backs are facing up and you're using the lines on the card backs for cutting guides. You want the card backs to look as similar as possible on every card. If any of the fronts happen to be a pinch off, it won't be as much of an issue as if the backs are not looking the same. I'm just going to try to cut directly on the lines between each card as accurately as possible. This step just takes a keen eye, a steady hand, and patience. But you'd be surprised how amazing the cards will look even if you cut them out with scissors. Now, through the magic of video editing, I'll speed up the process of cutting out all the cards. A few moments later. Ooh, will you look at this? Now to take care of those pesky corners.
The Katumaro Pro has three sizes, small, medium, and large for rounding corners. HeroQuest cards have small rounded corners. We'll use the small setting. Eh, you get the idea. I don't need to show myself cutting the corners on all eight cards. A few moments later. Yeah, now that's what I'm talking about. Now they just need to go through the laminator again to keep the laminate from peeling off the edges. What I like to do is send each card into the laminator four different ways, just to make sure all the edges are melted in enough so that they don't peel. That was one, and now two. Three. And now, four. You don't need to watch me do all the rest of the cards. I'll just skip to where I've finished them all. A few moments later. And now we're done re-laminating the cards. Just inspecting them to see how well they turned out. Looking pretty good. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this video series helped you to be able to make the custom HeroQuest cards that you wanted. Have a great day and happy HeroQuesting.